We have all heard it. Using uh, Mitsubishi 944 X-ray Sierra flight level. And we're going to call LA 135. The robot voice that clears you for takeoff into oncoming traffic. Or the incessant plea to switch frequencies. While all of this is good for general air traffic control knowledge, it can't replace a real human. This is where VATSIM comes in. VATSIM is a global network of pilots and air traffic controllers who have one mission, and that's to simulate an actual air traffic control environment to the best of their abilities. VATSIM is a place where air traffic controllers spend hours to learn the ins and outs of controlling. It's truly an art form to watch a controller work traffic when it's busy in their sector, and they do it with professionalism in mind. Here's the best part. It's free. Okay, fabulous. No computer-generated voices, no predictability with other air traffic. It's completely up to you, the pilot, to comply with correct instructions. First, our goal here is to introduce you to the world of VATSIM and give you some tips on how to build your time and your confidence while on the network. The very first thing you should do is become a member at VATSIM.net. Follow the instructions on how to verify. Once verification is complete, you will need to seek out a way to connect to their server. You do this by downloading vPilot at the link below. This is an approved connection client to the network. There are a few, so figure out which ones you like. Now before we fire this thing up, we're going to need to give you some tips to keep in your back pocket. Never connect on a runway of any kind. Always start at the ramp or terminal within MSFS or any other simulator platform. It's always a joy when you're on short final and an airplane spawns on the runway you're trying to land on. If you're new to air traffic control or ATC phraseology, we recommend not starting at the most busiest airports during rush hour, like London, Los Angeles, Atlanta, the list goes on. Know the airplane you're going to fly. If you're learning a new airplane, please learn the autopilot and systems, or if you're in a GA aircraft, know that well too. Too often, you can hear ATC vectoring a pilot who has a difficult time maintaining power and airspeed, or headings, because they don't know their airplane well. We recommend going to a satellite airport first that's close to one of the major airports. For example, we can choose Manchester, New Hampshire, and Boston. VATSIM has a top-down approach to controlling, which basically means if we were at an airport that has center, that center controller will be responsible for the satellite airports as well if no other approach controller is available. This is a good way to start to talk to ATC in a controlled environment without gumming up the works at a major airport. When you follow a flight plan in the remarks section, ensure you put student pilot in the remarks. And don't be ashamed, we all had to start somewhere with that. Finally, we recommend that you participate in their pilot training resources. It's a great way to start learning. Again, don't be nervous. We all have to start somewhere and we all started here. Stay with it, don't be intimidated. Here's basically 10 rules of thumb that they give us. Once you get a proof for entry into VATSIM, now it's time to show you how to connect. Let's start at a small airport. We're gonna take MRY, or Monterey, California for starters. And we're gonna start at the GA ramp. We're gonna be flying a Cessna to do a cross-country flight to Catalina Island. This airport is Class C, located within Oakland airspace. We will need a startup view pilot once the simulator is started. Go to settings. You'll see a few boxes that we're gonna to need to fill out. Next, you'll need to choose a server. You'll wanna pick one that is close to where you live. Type in your full name and your home airport. The notifications tab. You're going to want to choose which ones you will want to have enabled. For now, we're gonna have all of the options checked. Next is fonts. We just have the default option entered. It's your preference. Audio is next. Microphone device. On the drop down, add your microphone. It's usually a headset. Same with the output device. We have enabled VHF sound to give us basically authentic sound 
on the radios. And the one of the most important ones is push to talk. Head over to the push to talk key and set your PTT button to your liking. We have ours set on our 737 yoke, but you can choose anything you wish. Model matching. This option will check your SIM for any AI model aircraft you may have installed. This will try to match the aircraft type that it's signed in in. There are some third party applications out there to help you navigate this, but this topic can get really in depth and outside of the scope of this tutorial. Performance. This tab will allow you to adjust how many targets or aircraft you can see at any given point. Just keep something in mind when you do this. You gotta take in consideration an FPS hit with more aircraft enabled. Updates. We have this enabled to ensure that we're working with the latest platform. And finally, miscellaneous. If you forget to squawk mode C on takeoff, it's gonna automatically do so for you. Click apply and let's head to the sim. Once connected, you're gonna see a few things to note. The interface will show air traffic controllers in the range of view. It's important to know what controllers are in what airspace. To help with that, it's useful to pull up our Navigraph charts and have a look to see what air route center you're in. We're here in Monterey. We're in the actual Oakland center airspace. You can see the appropriate frequency here. We'll need to put that frequency into a radio panel in VHF number one and have a listen. So let's go to do that now, 133.950. All right, and 950. I thought I had it. 133.950, we're gonna flip it over here. And now we're tuning to 133.950. Let's go to the flight plan tab. Let's file a VFR flight plan to Kilo Alpha Victor X-Ray or Catalina Island. The flight type is gonna be VFR. Departure airport, Kilo Mike Romeo Yankee. Arrival airport. Kilo, Alpha, Victor, X-Ray. No alternates today on this one. We will put our departure time into the departure block to ensure that it is Zulu time and within two hours of our departure. Time and route should be about two hours and 30 minutes, give or take. Fuel available is about four hours. Our cruise speed is a whopping 120 knots and our altitude is about 6,500 feet. Routes will be some point that we have picked for the flight. Remarks, usually you put your equipment type into this section, but again, remember, put student pilot in there. Contacting ATC for clearance out of the class, she. Now it's time to contact Oakland Center on their frequency for clearance outside the class Charlie airspace. Let's listen in live and see what happens. Uh, Cessna 94945, we're at Monterey, looking to go uh, VFR on top if we can get it to Catalina. Stag 945 on course, departure approved, runway 2 left, clear for takeoff, excuse me. Do you have the RNF visual? I do, apparently, so I'm um, anxious to give it a try. Are you in Microsoft Flight Sim or what? Because I, I uh, thought I saw it in the FMC the last time I flew. Uh, no, I am in the prepared version and I have the charts loaded up for Jefferson um, or for Nav Navigraph and uh, yeah, it's in here, so pretty neat. Okay, hold it. Idle. Get in there. All right, there we go. That, my friend, is how you land an error. When flying VFR, there's really nothing to it on the VATSIM network. We just need to stay clear of Class B airspace, and if needed, request flight following. We hope you have decided to start using this great resource, and we hope this tutorial has calmed some of your fears about VATSIM. Hope to see you online soon.